I can totally see us cooking in this kitchen. I can totally see us cooking like pros with natural gas. Oh, I would love to soak in that tub. I'd love to save energy and money with a natural gas water heater. I can imagine cuddling up in here. Because natural gas heating keeps the house comfortable when we need it. We have to get this house. We have to get natural gas. We're investing in infrastructure to help bring comfort and savings to you. Visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy, always there. Yeah, well, um, a lot of the same thoughts after the last game. Players played hard in the game, stayed focused. Um, I think the offense did a great job of controlling the the tempo of the game uh, played very well. Uh, offensive line did a really, really good job of controlling the line of scrimmage. And uh, obviously, B Rob had a great day. Bryce did a good job um, taking what the defense would give. I think the defense played hard, got uh, really critical stops and critical times in the game, which gave us great field position and set up some scores with the turnover. Um, there's one thing we probably need to continue to develop is our ability to finish, whether it's a tackle, whether it's a block, whether it's a quarter, whether it's a game, whether it's, you know, stacking positive performance uh, from play to play, game to game, um, practice to practice, however you want to put it. Um, so, and I think that would help us be a little bit more consistent. Uh, you got the players of the week, you know, we're proud of B-Rob for be a national player, um, Walter Camp and SEC Player of the Week, and Will Anderson being the Defensive Player of the Week. So always great, you know, to see our players get recognized for positive performance. Um, I think, you know, this is a very challenging game that we have coming up against a very good team. Uh, these guys have 15 starters coming back uh, from, you know, one of the best teams in the country last year, uh, and. You know, this is a very challenging place to play. Um, so, you know, Jimbo does a great job getting his teams ready to play. He's a very good offensive play caller. Um, you know, they got a great defensive team. They're one of the top defensive teams in the country, uh, one of the tops in the SEC. Um, points allowed, 12 and a half points a game is, you know, really, you know, pretty phenomenal. And uh, they've got some really good players up front. They've got really good in the secondary. Uh, offensively, you know, they've got a great back in Spiller. Um, Nia Smith is a really good um, wide receiver, uh, very versatile player, pump returner, uh, kickoff returner, um, catch and run it, beach deep. Um, you know, really good player all around. Um, they've got a really good tight end. Um, so they've got a lot of good players. Uh, they're really good on special teams. They've got good team speed. They've got really, really good specialists, punter and kicker. So this is all around, you know, a really, really good team. Uh, maybe the best team we've played to this point from a personnel standpoint. Um, so this is a game that, you know, we really got to get our mind looking forward to the challenge that we have, which is going to be pretty significant. We'll start with Michael Casagrande. Uh, yeah, was there, first, was there any update on Jace McClellan? Yeah, Jace has uh, got a knee. Uh, he'll, he'll be out for the year. Uh, he's going to have surgery tomorrow. Um, so he's out. Okay. And w oh, okay, we're going to need to go ahead, Mike. The ball to somebody. Excuse me? Go ahead. We couldn't hear you there for a second. Okay. Yeah. Just if you could assess the passing game's ability to distribute the ball to so many different targets and how much strain does that put on a defense? Well, I, I think that it's um, what we want to do. You know, we've got a lot of players that are capable. Um, I think when you play a team like we played last week who drops eight guys a lot, um, the quarterback has, a, has to do a good job of reading the defense. So it's not so much about trying to get the ball to a particular player as it is to reading the defense and, you know, hitting the soft spot. Uh, whenever possible, and I think Bryce did a really good job of that. And the consequence of that is we had a lot of guys involved in the passing game. We'll go to Nick Kelly in Tuscaloosa. You guys have started um, just about every game pretty strong. Uh, why do you think that is in terms of offense and, and defense? Well, I guess it says something about good preparation. Um, and the players have good intensity to start the game, um, I think. You know, what we keep talking about is 
how can we sustain that? How can we, um, you know, keep that energy level up for 60 minutes in a game? Um, hopefully, you know, we learn a lesson about it's not just how you start, but it's how you finish relative to, especially when you're playing on the road, um, which is what I hope we learned at Florida. You know, we got off to a good start and then, you know, started to, you know, be pretty average in terms of how we executed and what we did. And the consequence was that as the other team gets the momentum of the game and comes back on you. So um, we, 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 we have to be able to continue um, to get over the hump and keep playing in, in every game. We'll go to Charlie Potter. Hey, Coach. Um, earlier this season, you said that Kamar Wheaton got injured in practice. Do you have an update on him and, and what exactly the injury yeah, he, is with him? He, he hasn't practiced. He had a meniscus or whatever, and um, so he's kind of week to week. Um, but, you know, he's not been cleared medically to practice at this point. We'll go to Cecil. Cecil, go ahead. You mentioned the offensive line playing better against Cole Mills, showing improvement. Is there any one particular individual? I know Evan plays at a high level. Is there any individual that sort of stood out on the offensive line and developed for game one specific point? No, well, we gave the entire offensive line um, sort of the player of the week award because we thought as a group um, they did a very, very good job um, collectively uh, and individually. So um, I, I can't sit here and say, you know, I'd pick one guy out and say that guy really played well. I think if you talk to every guy, you know, they would say that there's something they could have done a little better. Um, so, but we, we, we were, we did what we needed to do in that game um, and the offensive line was a big part of it. We'll go to John Zener with the Associated Press. Yeah, along those same lines, it, um, two parter on the offensive line. One, can you do? You kind of switched gears a little bit offensively because of matchups and everything. That, how much of that is a credit to the offensive line to trust in them, and how have they progressed as a group, kind of as, as this season's gone along? Well, I think they've improved every week uh, as they gain experience and knowledge and play together. I think you know there's been, you know, steady improvement, uh, but each week's a new challenge and. Uh, we're going to play against a really good front seven this week, so this will probably be the most challenged they've been, you know, all season long. So to continue to progress is, I think, going to be a really um, key part for us to have success against this defense. You know, I remind you, if you want to ask a question, please use the raise your hand function. We'll go to Mike Rodak. What, what have you seen out of Treshawn Holden and some of the increased playing time that he's earned? Just overall, what sort of development have you seen from some of the younger receivers? Well, Treshawn has been the most consistent guy. Uh, he's got the most playing time. Uh, we need for, you know, some of our younger guys to um, step up, show maturity in terms of preparation and ability to execute uh, knowledge um, and sort of follow the lead of some of the other guys in terms of how they practice, how they prepare, what they do. I think that's going to be really critical for us as we move down the road. Okay, we'll go to Steven. Coach, you talked about earlier that a lot of young guys on defense, but are you starting to see some voices rise on that side of the ball to talk about how important finishing games are? Well, I, I, yeah, I think that, um, you know, I've talked about that we have quite a few young guys on our team. Um, we don't have a real senior laden team. Uh, and I think the more that the younger guys have success, uh, the more confident that they uh, will be in terms of how they express their leadership uh, to affect other people. Uh, we've got a lot of young guys that set a really good example in terms of how they do things. Uh, there's two parts of leadership, though. You know, you got to have people who lead, but you got to also have other people on the team that recognize the leadership and follow along. And um, you know, take the example that they see and implement that in their play and believe that, you know, that's going to be beneficial to helping them, you know, get what they want. Uh, creating the right habits is, you know, something that, um, 
every player needs to understand the importance of that so that you're well prepared and when you do get an opportunity uh, you're going to be able to take advantage of it okay we'll go back to nick kelly how uh, how would you describe the kind of speed that will anderson has uh i don't know i how do you describe speed? I mean, the guy's got initial quickness. Uh, he's got power. Uh, he's got enough speed to rush the edge and challenge the edge. And he can turn speed to power and pass rush. So if they do cut him off, he can you know, walk the guy back. Uh, the guy plays with tremendous competitive character, uh, gives great effort all the time. Uh, he's got a lot of pride in his performance. And uh, he works that way every day. I mean, he works that way in practice. and. Uh, so, I, I don't know how to describe what you're asking me exactly. I can describe the player, but um, so, and he's been very, very productive so far for us this year. We'll go to Cecil again. Coach, one quick follow-up. Uh, how has Roy Bell come along, and is he sort of ready to take a expanded role if that's what? required in Jason's past? Yeah, I don't think there's any question. You know, we've got a lot of confidence in Roy Dell. He's played well when he's had the opportunity to play. Um, he's got, you know, some extensive playing time, the game that B-Rob missed against, you know, uh, Southern Miss. So, um, you know, we're very confident in him. You know, Jace was a very good player, did a great job on uh, as a runner, as well as a blocker, as well as very good special teams player. So um, we have to replace him in a lot of areas on our team. And, uh, but I do have, we do have confidence in Roy Dell, and I think he'll do a good job. And Trey Sanders is going to get more opportunity now, and he's got to be able to step up and continue to make progress as well. We'll go to Tony Sakalas. Yeah, Nick, uh, kind of piggybacking off of that question, has, with only three healthy scholarship backs, uh, has there been thought to maybe – play a position a player from another position at, at that role yeah we'll, we'll we'll probably look at some of that um I see how it works out if some guy has experience playing that position uh, we'll see you know how they might be able to develop and be an emergency guy and we've got several guys in mind but we'll kind of see how it how it goes okay well we've got two more to wrap up we'll start with uh, joey Hey, Coach, kind of going off of those two previous questions, with Trey Sanders and Roy Dell Williams, you know, having to step up, like you said, um, what's the importance of having depth at that position with McClellan out for the year? Well, it's really important, but we've kind of lost two guys at the position. I mean, five is a good number to have, but uh, now we have three. So, but I think that would be the case in any position. Uh, you lose guys at any position, two or three guys at any position, and it challenges your depth. And um, so that's the case. Uh, and hopefully you don't get snake bit and lose a bunch of guys at one position, which really can have a, an impact on your team. We'll finish with Jacob. Yeah, Coach, I just wanted to ask you about Federer and Mathis, uh, what he's bringing to the table. He's getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback, but also uh, from a leadership standpoint, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, he's done a really good job. Um, he, he's showing leadership. He's setting a good example. Uh, he's playing hard in the games, and um, he is being very productive. Um, so we're, we're very pleased with what he's done to this point. And uh, he's always been a guy that um, plays hard and tries to please the coach and do everything he can to help the team win. It's important to him. And, um, you know, those are the kind of guys you love to have on your team. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you.